culvert is a short conduit placed under a fill, such as a highway embankment or under a road to convey stream flow. A culvert is engineered to pass the design discharge without overtopping. The three most common culvert materials are concrete, corrugated aluminum, and corrugated steel. The flow in a culvert is a function of 1. Cross-sectional size and shape 2. Slope 3. Length 4. Roughness 5. Entrance and exit characteristics Flow in a culvert may be either free surface or close conduit and may alternate between them in time and space. The headwater is the depth above the culvert invert at the inlet. The tailwater is the depth above the culvert invert at the outlet. The headwater and tailwater depths determine whether the culvert will flow partially full or completely full. The design objective is to select the most economical culvert size that will pass the design discharge without exceeding a specified headwater elevation. The design depends on whether the culvert is under inlet or outlet control. Inlet control occurs when the culvert is capable of conveying more flow than the inlet will allow. Outlet control occurs when the culvert is capable of conveying less flow than the inlet will allow. Under inlet control, the control section is at the inlet and the flow is supercritical immediately downstream. Under these conditions, only the headwater depth and inlet configuration affect culvert performance. The flow passes through critical depth at the inlet and becomes supercritical downstream. In the absence of high tailwater, the flow remains supercritical throughout and control remains at the inlet. When the flow at the inlet is open to the atmosphere, the flow condition resembles that of weir flow. When the flow at the inlet is submerged, the flow condition resembles that of an orifice. When the outlet is submerged due to high tailwater, a hydraulic jump will form inside the culvert and control will shift to the outlet. Under outlet control, the control section is at the outlet and the flow is either under pressure or subcritical immediately upstream. Under these conditions, all factors affect culvert performance. These include 1. Headwater depth 2. Inlet configuration 3. Barrel characteristics including area, shape, length, slope, and roughness and 4. Tailwater depth. Outlet control hydraulics is best described with pressure flow in the culvert barrel. Therefore, a culvert under outlet control is calculated with the energy equation resembling close conduit flow. Typically, outlet control occurs when both inlet and outlet are submerged due to high headwater and high tailwater. Outlet control may also occur when the culvert barrel has a mild slope and both headwater and tailwater depths are less than the culvert diameter. In this case, the culvert operates as open channel flow, either with uniform or gradually varied flow. Under inlet control, the aim is to calculate the headwater depth required to pass the design discharge. Under outlet control, 
the aim is to calculate the energy loss required to pass a design discharge. Given a design tailwater depth and accounting for all head losses, an energy balance provides the headwater depth required to pass the design discharge. In any case, the calculated headwater must not exceed a maximum allowable headwater elevation. The trial and error procedure first assumes a culvert type and size and proceeds to calculate a headwater elevation for the assumed size. The procedure is repeated until the most economical size is found for which the calculated headwater elevation remains below the allowable maximum. Design a culvert for the following conditions. The design elevation for the upstream pool is the roadway shoulder elevation, 110 minus the freeboard, 2 equal to 108 feet. Assume a circular concrete pipe with square edge with head walls. First assume outlet control. Calculate the outlet invert elevation. Calculate the downstream pool elevation. The energy equation between upstream and downstream pools is The velocity in the upstream pool is zero. Likewise, the velocity dissipates to zero in the downstream pool. Thus, the energy balance is The objective of the design is to find the diameter that will produce a total of 6.5 feet of head loss. The sum of head losses is equal to the entrance and exit losses plus the head loss along the pipe in which F sub D is the darcy Weisbach friction factor. The relation between darcy Weisbach friction factor and Manning's N is in which K is a unit conversion factor equal to 1 in SI units in 1.486 in U.S. customary units. In U.S. customary units with G equal to 32.17 feet per second square, the relation between darcy Weisbach friction factor and Manning's N is for a circular pipe The relation between darcy Weisbach friction factor and Manning's N for pipe flow is In terms of Manning's N, the sum of head losses is Assume the entrance loss coefficient, K sub E equal 0.5, the expansion loss coefficient, K sub capital E equal 1, 
and with n equal 0 0.013 and l equal 200 feet, now I'll replace the velocity. And with Q equal 200, and the flow area in terms of the culvert diameter, and G equal 32.17 feet per second squared. Solving this equation for D by trial and error. For design, choose the next larger size, that is 4.5 feet or 54 inches. Enter the FHWA design nomograph with diameter 54 inches, design discharge Q equal 200 CFS and square edge with head walls to find the ratio of headwater depth to diameter. The calculated headwater depth is 9. the upstream pool elevation is 100 plus 9.9 .9 equal 109.9 feet which exceeds the allowable value of 108 feet. Therefore the culvert is undersized at 4.5 feet diameter. Next Assume the next larger size, a 5 feet diameter pipe. Enter the FHWA design nomograph with diameter 60 inches. Design discharge Q equal 200 CFS and square edge with head walls to find the ratio of headwater depth to diameter. The calculated headwater depth is 9. the calculated upstream pool elevation is 100 plus 8 equal 108 feet which matches exactly the allowable value of 108 feet. Therefore the culvert is correctly sized at 5 feet diameter. For this culvert flow, the normal depth is 3.28 feet and the critical depth is 4.04 feet. Since the normal depth is less than the critical depth, the flow will remain supercritical in the culvert barrel. However, since the tailwater depth, 3.5, is slightly greater than the normal depth, 3.28, a small hydraulic jump is produced near the outlet. For the most part, the culvert will remain under inlet control.